It will come as no surprise to all of you uh, that Rishi Sunak, fresh from his admission yesterday that he might not actually be able to stop the boats in time for the next election, uh, that he may have failed uh, in one of his five um, pleas to say that he's going to change Britain. Ben Habib is here. Good I don't morning. think any of us, Ben, are surprised that Rishi has now decided to be honest with the electorate <laughs> and say, do you know what? I must be honest. I don't think we're going to do it. Well, I think he said at the time, judge me by the end of the year, Absolutely. and if I haven't done it, you can then take whatever action you wish to take. Stops. Well, presumably, and the action now is to get, get kick him out of him. office. Uh, well, he said stop the boat. Yeah. I think it was either number one or number five on his five yeah. things that he was going to achieve. And in April, do you remember the, was it April or May, when he went down to Dover and he mm. said, well, boats are down 20%, my right. plan's working. Yeah. And then what a all of a sudden the weather improved yeah. and boom. Exactly. You know, there's been a massive influx. And, and at I the think, time everybody said, no, it's because they haven't come because the weather's because been bad. Because the weather. And the tides have been wrong. He knew that, of yeah, course. Of course he did. He was trying to get his little did. sound bite into yeah. the 24-hour news cycle. Yeah. And I think yesterday, or was it day before yesterday, 800 people came across. Yes. That's 1.6 times... Bibby Stockholm, mm. isn't it? Yeah. So that's 1.6 well, I mean, barges, I've seen a figure this none morning. of which are filled. I've seen a figure this morning that suggests that something like 18,000 people have now come over um, within recent weeks. And so it's another record. Every sort of second day, there's yet another record. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It is ridiculous. And... Um so just for viewers who aren't already familiar, there can't be very many viewers who aren't familiar with the story, but effectively, Britain's policy with the illegal crossings, the way Rishi Sunak and his cabinet wish to stop the boats, is through deterrence. Mm. And their idea of deterring these people from coming to the country was Rwanda. Well, that failed. They had the Nationality Borders Bill, which became the Act, yeah. and they were going to be all tough on crime and people smugglers and the rest of it. That failed. The Illegal Migration Bill, which was um, received by all those who would prefer open borders as some kind of devil's act incarnate. Yes. And that was passed into law on the 20th of July. So we've had that for a month, mm. giving Suella Braverman the right, in fact, the obligation to detain and then deport people who enter the country yeah. illegally. Well, none of that's happened. Right. So the Illegal Migration Act hasn't worked. Mm. No deterrent has worked. And there's a simple reason for that they get much, much better treatment in the United Kingdom mm. than they do in yeah. France. And we've got the numbers now, Mike. So um, we spent £3.7 billion last year on caring, housing, mm. feeding these people who've right. crossed the channel illegally. Right. They were still presumably in hotels. You remember those uh, Pimlico uh, residents who uh, didn't like the fact four that the hotel their, in room was, yeah. their room was, had too many people in it and they didn't like the Wi-Fi. You know, they said to Richard Tice when he spoke to them outside the hotel that they'd been in a hotel in Essex for two years. So, I mean, these people yeah. that you talk about who came and we paid for last year will probably still be in the same Absolutely. hotels. Absolutely. And they're not going to be on the Bibby Stockholm, which no. is now empty. Right. Um, but we spend, just to enumerate it for people who are listening, 50,000 per illegal migrant. The French spend 5,000 yeah. per illegal migrant. There's a £45,000 incentive mm. to cross the channel yeah. and come to the United Kingdom. Right. And Border Force isn't doing what it says no. it should do. Border Force suggests that they might actually use some force at the border. Yes. That's what the name well, implies, well, doesn't it? One of our callers yesterday renamed them the Open Border Force because, in <laughs> fact, that's what they are. But have a look at this video that's emerged on TikTok, and there's quite a few of these now because an awful lot of these uh, young men are passing these videos around as if it's some kind of great jest and great sort of... I mean, they're not, they're not... No, here it is now. This is a guy who's travelling from France. He's on a train in France. It looks like a pretty nice train. Wow, uh, he's train. looking like yeah. he's wearing some pretty decent clothes. I mean, if you looked at this, you would think this is the travelogue of a young man making his way across Europe uh, on a gap year and deciding to sort of make his way uh, into England. And here he is, wandering the streets of London, uh, having arrived here, looking very happy, looking very clean. Uh, he's got a new haircut, he's got new clothes. Um, you know, now there he is uh, on the dinghy, crossing the channel. And um, I know that there are terrible things that happen on the channel and terrible things have happened, but an awful lot of the crossings are quite safe because almost all of them get here without any problem at all. They don't look concerned, really. These don't look like people who are frightened of the water, to me. Um, there's an awful lot of them and it doesn't look particularly safe, but they don't look worried. Um, and then they arrive, as you can see, uh, on the other side of the channel, here in the UK, 
Um, the journey is complete. It's like a sort of, you know... It's like a holiday it's jaunt. A, it's like a holiday a, a snapshot of, of, of a trip that you would make with your family yeah. somewhere. I, I'm actually stunned. That's the first time I've seen that yeah. video. It and is here he is stunning. now in the hotel. Now, check this hotel room out. That is a nice hotel. And look at the, uh, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very clean. It looks very new. He's on the bed. He's chilling out, watching <laughs> the TV. He's probably ordered some pizza. I mean, it's quite remarkable. It is remarkable. It? And there will be people looking at that now who are living in, you know, sort of com comparable squalor, who can't afford uh, to order in some pizza. British citizens. Yeah. Uh, who might have friends who are uh, really, really on the breadline. People who can't get a job, who, even though they want one. People who are maybe uh, on the dole. People who are homeless. And they see that and you go, well, this is like a holiday video. It's rubbish. Isn't it's it? It's absolute it's collapse shocking. of our, our, Absolutely our government. Shocking. He's named on uh, TikTok as Rahat Popal. He's thought to be an Afghan national. Um, he recorded uh, the, the trip beginning at an unnamed location in France. He's seen travelling to the north of France, thought to be the Gare du Nord, uh, then seen a French field meeting up with a group of other men. He then goes and gets on the boat and just, you know, wanders across to yeah. Britain. Incredible. Well, as I said before, Mike, the only form of deterrence that's going to work is actually stopping them in yeah. the channel. Or stopping them from leaving France. Or, yeah, that? but, you know, the French are never going to do that, are they? It must be such a well-trodden route. Mm. It must be so obvious that these dinghies are sitting in, um, you know, sand dunes, hidden away. Yes. Um, it must be so obvious where to find them. It must be so easy. Mm. They must tread the same path mm. day in, day yeah. out. The launching pads well, must be very close together. I don't together. know if you heard our show last week, but we had a guy who called in who had been to Dunkirk on holiday, and he said that he was on the beaches of Dunkirk, took his family to have a look at, you know, where everything happened. And there, of course, was a big, huge 4 by 4 with a big trailer on the back of it, three massive dinghies, uh, who, which were then... Hook, unhooked from the from the from the car, wandered walked down to the edge of the um, of the shore. Then a double decker bus turns up, full of migrants. Yeah, so, so it's not exactly hidden, up. is it? Right. And the other thing that was going on was there was a, a car, a police car, gendarmerie sitting there watching it all, doing nothing. Yeah. Well, there you go. So that's what's happened. That's where our £670 million yeah. pounds is gone. The gendarmerie sitting mm. comfortably in their car, watching these people attempting to cross the channel illegally. Yes. And it, uh, we've got to take unilateral action, Mike. We've got to do, We've got to have a campaign. Talk TV should say, you should start it, Mike. A campaign to stop the boats mm. in the channel. Yeah. We've got to develop the courage to do it. It's what the Australians mm. did. And, and also, people, by the way, the Belgians have apparently stopped them from coming. So if the Belgians can stop them from coming, why is it not possible for the French to do the same? Well, there's no incentive, is there? They want them off their shores. They're being paid. The more we pay them, the more people they send, the more we pay them. They've, you know, they've cottoned on to that positive yeah. re reinforcing cycle and they're just going to keep, keep doing it. Yeah. And here's um, another story that will shock you, because uh, this is coming from uh, haulage firms, and haulage firms are getting together because they say the industry risks losing drivers if the government continues to find truckers whose vehicles are targeted by migrants. There's a company called EM Rogers, based in Northampton, said one of its drivers was fined £9,000 when three people were found when crossing from Calais to Dover in April. And the company itself was fined fifteen grand. Now, what's the difference between people driving lorries who inadvertently bring migrants here and the RNLI who are bringing them actually deliberately aiding why are they a, not being they're fined? aiding and abetting yeah. criminal activity why are they not these being people fined? RNLI are not picking people up who are in distress they're picking people up who are perfectly happy in their dinghy yeah. they're just giving them a free ride mm. it's extraordinary yeah absolutely right and incredibly um, they're being punished for something that they can't really stop but in fact, the people who are doing it in a massive way, um, in, in by the thousands, 18,000 people coming this year, are free to do it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's shocking. It? And if we have got any strength through the legislation passed in the Illegal Migration Act and the National Indian Borders Act, if there's any strength in those two acts, why aren't they charging RNLI with the aiding and abetting mm. of people smuggling? Yeah. That, that's what RNLI is well, doing. It's picking so. up the second leg mm. of what the people smugglers started yeah. in France. Right. That's, that, that's exactly what it is. People might not want to hear that, yeah. but that is what they're doing, yeah. and they should be taken to task. And the RNLI will say, of course, that they rescue people who are in danger but on they're the not sea. In, well, you, we just saw that video. But they don't look as if they're in danger, and I think that is the issue. I mean, there is a, a, a merchant sea law, apparently, that says if you see somebody that you think is in peril on the sea, you are duty-bound to rescue them. And but then, this is not that. Well, that's not and, what's going on. And that merchant law, by the way, has a 
qualification mm. only if it's reasonable to do so. Yeah. And actually, it's not reasonable to, to rescue people who are willfully putting themselves in harm's way yeah. and attempting to enter your country illegally. I, mean, I presume it's also not um, um, reasonable to rescue people in French waters and then take them all the way to Britain. Which is what we surely did just off the French them, yeah. coast. Surely yeah. if you're rescuing them, you take them to the closest part of the land. Which is back to France. Which is France, and that's what should be going on. I've got this from um, Alex this is in uh, Stratford. Mike, just spoken to a friend who lives in Portland. Barge migrants get a free hourly bus service into town until 8pm, and if they miss the last bus home, they can get a taxi and we get the bill. Yeah, there you go. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's worth moving to Portland to live in the Bibby Stockholm. In fact, um, you could take your family there for a holiday, couldn't you? Weekend holiday in Portland, it's quite nice. Weymouth was voted Beach of the Year. <laughs> it's not far away. Uh, there's a couple of nice restaurants, yeah. a couple of very good pubs down there. I've been there. A nice place to walk the dog. Just just go down there and say, can I, you, you know, given that I've now paid for this thing... Well, we're going to stay on my, baby stock Through home. my taxes, <laughs> I'm arriving with my five kids and we'd like three rooms with two bunks in each and 24-hour uh, service on the old canteen. Why not? Yeah. Why not get well, some the, of your tax back? It's empty, isn't it, at the moment? Well, I think, there's, I think they did... They not put the 15 back on it have they put 15 i think they may it? have done yeah. so but there's no more than that so there's plenty of room the Absolutely. cost of bb stockholm 18 million a year yeah and it's empty i mean it'd be cheaper to stay at the savoy <laughs> <laughs>